Happy, happy Mushoku Sunday. The finale is not here yet. Well, it is, but we'll get it out tomorrow for us. But hey, we got N News Mushoku Tensei cut content regarding how Roxy saved a broken Rudius. I feel like this is going to be important before we start watching the finale. Let's see what Mr. Andy News has to say. This could very well be the most important video I've ever made on Mushoku Tensei. Okay. Not because entire chapters were Jesus. missing or some world building was cut, but rather because there were so many additional layers to Rudy and Roxy's development here. And in use just doesn't want Roxy the grooming homewrecker to get cancelled on social media, but let's hear the defense. You see, what the anime showed was just the surface level of what Rudy and Roxy were really going through. Rudy's grief wasn't just about Paul's death, and Roxy's bold move stems from a deeper personal understanding only mm. she could have. Yeah, deeper understanding, because she knew him since he was a baby! There are these extremely important details that make this episode about so much more. Moments, I would argue, are essential to defining their characters. So, as I go through how it is Roxy saved Rudius, I hope I can do justice to what it was both were going through at the time. But first, Mujin Collection merch drop. Now, here's a quick reminder to check out the Mashoku Tensei-inspired Mugen apparel. And yeah, 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 actually. Live on stream. I'm not sure if I like the sword designs. The link to both will be down in the- The Roxy t-shirt suddenly appeals to me, though, for some reason. For some reason, that Roxy t-shirt. Leaderboard? What is this shit? What did Rudy turn the secret room in the basement to? Oh, they're doing some other like games and stuff Anyone like that. Anyone could sense it. Oh. Covering chapters 10 to 13 from volume 12 of the light novel. I'm gonna start things off from right after the Hydra fight since it's from here that the anime sped things up a bit. What I mean is that we pretty much went from one tragedy right into the next without yep. really highlighting how much time had passed between them. With the time it took to escape the labyrinth as well as the time it took to get back to the city, there were actually several days in which Rudy got to contemplate Paul's death. It was like two minutes the for us. The journey itself was very sloppy, but no matter how many mistakes Rudy made along the way, not one person complained or even spoke to him. It seemed there weren't really any words that anyone wanted to say right now. It Must was be the most awkward Roxy walk. That Rudy was even able to make it out though, since without her right behind him guiding his movements, it was very likely he would have stepped on a teleportation trap. Luckily, he didn't, Imagine. so aside from a few relatively intense battles, their party was able to make it out unscathed. Now, the first night back was one of the most important, since the dream he had where he sees his Mom and dad introduces that additional layer of grief I mentioned at the beginning of the video. Right, he was like, would they care about me if their son was dead, or he also asked, like, would I even care about going to see their funeral if they died, right? It's the first part of a much longer self-reflection we should have seen later. One that uncovers an absolutely essential piece of Rudy's character development. Alright, but what I really want to know is why did Roxy have to give her coochie for, you know, Rudy? That's what I want to know. Right now we're doing a lot of setup for it, a lot of defense and protection for, you know, what Rudy's going through. But like, I don't think most people give a fuck about that. I don't think most people give a fuck about Rudy. I think a lot of people just want to know. Why did Roxy serve cunts that episode? Why? So... The dream was actually a memory from Rudy's past life, and it brings to light the long-forgotten question of what was the relationship with his parents like. Mm. Like, we've seen them trying to support his recovery the best way they could, but if they were truly supportive all the way to the end, then why was it that Rudy didn't go to their funeral? This was the question Rudy was contemplating himself, and it brought- Because he doesn't like his parents? Because he doesn't give a fuck? Because- He's a twisted person back on Earth. He has no empathy. He, there's no connection. He feels ashamed, embarrassed. He showed up there. Then maybe other people would judge him for being a piece of shit. Maybe other people would blame him for their death. Brought with it all sorts of thoughts like how did they die and what did they think about him when they died. That's right. Rudy was so isolated in the world he'd confined himself to that he didn't even know what it was that killed his parents. This made him wonder if they were perhaps ashamed or angry at him, but just like Both the probably? way they died... So too were their final thoughts of him a mystery. In the end, he had no idea how they truly felt about him anymore. Perhaps he didn't even cross their mind when they died. As for how Rudy felt when it happened, well, at the time, he honestly <laughs> didn't feel anything. <laughs> Bro's feeling a lot right now. This jacking into lollicon stuff right now. To quote his own words from the novel, 
he didn't love them enough to grieve their absence. Damn. He was less concerned about having lost them and more worried by the thoughts of how he was going to live now. Yeah, that's pretty messed up. Who cares? Am I gonna have to pay rent now though? Oh, this is a hassle. Combine this with his fear of how people perceived this, and what you get is the core reason for why he didn't attend their funeral. You see, Rudy was afraid of the way people looked at him when they saw he wasn't sad about his parents. He was scared of the hostility and contempt he knew he'd be confronted by. So, just like how he'd done for the majority of his life, he decided to avoid it the best way- Run away from your problems, baby! As much as Rudy knew this type of behavior wasn't acceptable, he honestly just couldn't help but act this way. Reason being that, for him, his parents dying was the equivalent of losing his last source of salvation. It was kind of like salvation. being tossed into the ocean without taking a breath first. Yes, Rudy knew that this was selfish, but when you've lived a life as dependent as his, to lose it all suddenly was more than enough to make him want to escape reality. Okay. It was simply too much for him to handle at the time. That's not me trying to make excuses for him, but is instead just- I have no pity for this piece of shit back on Earth, by the way. Like, this character is an absolute dog shit garbage character, and he's supposed to be, right? That's exactly what Earth Rudy's supposed to be, and yes, you could say, well, what did you think about the bullying? Yeah, that's not justified either. All right, there's a lot of things that's going wrong here. He's a product of, you know, bullying and harassment, but also, th this is who he is. But So I have, like, absolutely just, like, I see him, and I'm like, what a piece of shit. Didn't even care about parents. Saw their parents' death as like, oh man, who's gonna pay rent for this now? But I understand why this is happening though. That's how Rudy perceived it all himself. He was well aware he should have done more and tried a little bit harder. In fact, after seeing Paul's face the way it was when he died, the regret of not seeing his own parents' faces were now starting Boom. to resurface. A reminder. He truly wished he could go back in time and see how it was that they looked. This was a deeply rooted trauma Rudy didn't even know he was carrying, and as you'll soon see, it ties heavily into the depraved state we see him in later. Not gonna lie, the Genshin Impact Inazuma somber soundtrack in the background fits very well for this stuff. Before that though, Rudy first has to find out about Zenith. It was the day after that distressing dream with his parents, and Rudy was overcome by an intense desire to do nothing. It took all he could to get up and do something, since as much as he wanted to crawl back into bed, the urge to do anything was even stronger. So, that something was watching over Zenith, and what Rudy initially felt as momentary relief, quickly turned to distraught as everything who was Zenith was missing. So I was right here. I was like, better not be memory loss. And then she was like, uh, 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 and I'm like, oh shit, it's actually worse than memory loss. But it was actually confirmed last episode that it is indeed memory loss, so she just doesn't know how to speak, right? Her brain just basically got reset. I'm not sure how confirmed that is, but the anime makes me believe that her memory is gone and her basic functions is gone and she needs to relearn it, so she's just a baby right now. Her memory, knowledge, and intelligence was all gone. This hit harder than you might expect since, while yes, Rudy was distant from Zenith as he mentioned last episode, there was a bit of reassurance that came from knowing he could share Paul's death with her. Yeah, at least my, if my dad's dead, I had got my mom to talk this with. Well, it's psych, mom doesn't even know shit anymore. As the embodiment of Paul's hopes and struggles, if anyone was gonna understand the grief that Rudy was going through, Zenith would be the one to share it with. The moment Rudy realized what a he pitiful wouldn't character. be able to, that's when his heart shattered and reality collapsed. Not only was everything everyone worked towards for naught, but whatever solace Rudy thought he could find was gone now. It had instantly sent Rudy straight into the depths of despair. You got Roxy though! Days would then pass without Rudy so much as leaving his bed, and his time would be spent in an endless loop of sleeping and waking up. When asleep, he would dream the final moments right before Paul's mm. death, then when awake he would contemplate who he was to him. As much as he wanted to get up and do something, Rudy simply didn't have the willpower to follow through on it. Instead, he just lay in bed thinking about who it was he'd just lost in his life. So, to understand more about what Rudy thought about Paul, by most standards, he was a Dad? complete failure as a father. <laughs> he wasn't the best example for any child, but even so, Rudy still loved him anyway. I feel like Paul's a very good father. In a realistic way? Because like, yes. He's a belligerent womanizer. Absolutely. Everyone knows that. I'm not justifying his 
qualities like that. But he did try his best to be a dad. And like if you think about how he couldn't even raise his kid properly because the kid was a fucking 30 plus year old man mentally. You know, it's just like there was never that connection either. And imagine being like growing up and you can't even be there for your kid because the kid knows everything and you're like, this is weird. And it's like the relationship never got settled. Even then, he still tried his best. And yes, there's a lot of shortcomings. But in a realistic depiction of like the average dad that is full of faults, but has a good heart at the end of the day and wants to try his best. I thought that Paul was a great character. Not the way a child usually loved a parent, but rather as someone who Rudy felt he could relate to. He was more so a partner in crime or someone on even yeah. footing with him. It's because of that that he could never truly see Paul as his father, but that didn't matter since Paul saw Rudy as his child. No matter how bizarre his behavior was growing up, <laughs> Come on, Paul bro. never once thought of Rudy as anything but family. Sure, there were times when he should have acted different, but in each and every interaction he'd ever had with him, Rudy was and forever will be Paul's son. He was a true father all the way through. Yeah, I Whether agree. Whether it be by carrying burdens far too heavy for himself, or by literally shielding Rudy from certain death, Paul lived his life the way that every dedicated father would. Protecting his family! So, just like how Rudy said in the anime, he wasn't Paul's child, but Paul was most certainly still his father. That's a good way to put Sadness it. Sadness bubbled as Rudy considered the true family he was leaving behind, and that led to tears which came as a shock to him. What I mean is that not once did Rudy cry when his real parents died, yet... Yeah, because the real parents dying, there was no bond. But Paul, there was a deeper bond. So it goes to show, these relationships, even if it's bound by blood, at the end of the day, there is more to it. It depends on how like connected you are with these people, right? People can be blood-related and have no affection for each other. But people could be not blood-related and feel like their families, not by blood, but by choice. Here he was not able to hold himself back. These tears were flowing naturally for someone he didn't even consider his real parent. This may have been strange in the moment, but in time it made it clear Paul was every bit apparent to Rudy as the ones from his past life. So the more Rudy thought about the person Paul was, the more he would cry until the point of exhaustion. Where's Roxy? He would then sleep and dream of those horrifying moments, then repeat the process and do it all over again. Where's Roxy? Time slipped by as Rudy lay in bed, barely doing anything. Alina Lise and Lilia would occasionally check up on him, but because he was so engrossed in his own distraught, they might as well have been speaking an entirely different language. Rudy's brain simply couldn't comprehend them. Even if it could, it's not like he would have replied anyway since he just didn't have words to say. Rudy would then wonder if there was a way he could have saved Paul, but that only brought with it countless regrets for not having done Battle or around or like if If the battle aura was there, and again, this is a mechanic that never gets mentioned in the anime for whatever. It's like a coating of mana to like, you know, imbue your body stronger, but like, could he have? Like, could he have survived the attack if the Hydra, like, with the battle aura? I feel like that's cap. That's like, cool. If they had just left, planned a bit more, then came back later, surely Paul would be alive and the outcome better. Rudy knew it was far too late for that though, so instead he simply had to accept that Paul was dead. Just like his parents from his past life, he needed to understand that he'd never see them again. No matter what he did or what he said, both them and Paul were now gone forever. Well, it's a world of magic after all. Is it really gone forever? What if there's some freedom shit where you could like have a spell to like talk to the people in the afterlife or like, I don't know, a hallucination of like some kind of bullshit main character power of where it's like Rudy's in a dire situation. Then he starts to envision Paul, you know, there's like a different ways to kind of like bring Paul back in without him being alive. But, you know, he's pretty much dead. This brings us now to a cutscene with Roxy since while Rudy was spending the day swallowing in grief, Roxy was actively trying to figure out a way to help him. Mm. It's the missing. What could I do? What could I do to help this young man come out of depression? Hmm, should I cook for him? Should I be there for him emotionally? Should I, like, give him words of encouragement? Should I just fuck him? All of the above. Context explaining how she was able to make the bold step we saw in the anime. Alright, let's see the good context. So Come on. A pub with let's Geese, go. Tallhand, and Alina Lise, and the four of them were trying to figure out what to do. Yeah. Initially with Zenith, then with Rudy. The topic of Zenith was particularly troubling since the state she was in was tougher to accept than death. 
You see, whereas death was something every adventurer was always ready to accept, Zenith's condition was something worse. It's it kinda was true. an affliction of the mind that everyone knew to be unrecoverable. It's unrecoverable! Well, again, in a world of magic, is it really? Again, no spoilers, I don't want any kind of confirmations, but like, is it unrecoverable? Unlike physical injuries, which could always be It's impossible? A broken mind couldn't be restored no matter how powerful the healing was. Really? Not even the Divine Tear could help those affected by it. Really? Even this Orsted couldn't! This case more of a lost cause than anything, so oh, instead shit. the group decided to focus on who they could help right now. Specifically Rudy and his ever-deteriorating conditions. He hadn't eaten since the day Paul died, and he was barely drinking more than the required minimum. It was a terrible state that only worsened the longer it went on for. Alright, now goes in, in Roxy. Fact, at the rate Rudy was going, there was a good chance he would be joining Paul soon. Thus the reason why everyone had gathered to discuss it. Alright, team meeting. Alright, guys, let's go. Eddie not easy? What do you think? Well, I can't fuck my grandson in the law because Sylphie, so I feel like that's not on me. I, I can't do this. Talhan, what about you? Well, shit, if I clap that young boy cheeks, this show is going to get canceled even harder on Twitter, so I'm out. Well, that leaves you, Roxy. What are you going to do, Roxy? Well, I guess I got to take one for the team then, huh? Wait, but hold on. Why is this grounded in sex? Why is sexual relief the only way to solve Rudy's, you know, depression? Explain that part. So... The best solution was determined to have someone sleep with him, but Why? the main problem was figuring Why? out who. Hold up, you're skipping the couple lines of logic here. Why is the best solution to have someone sleep with them? Because if you're in such a vulnerable moment, having some sort of physical contact and having someone to be intimate with somehow heals the mind? That's the only conclusion one could come through right now, right? I was expecting a little bit more, you know, justification on why you committed to this. The obvious choice was, of course, Alina Lise, but Grandma! given her circumstances, she obviously couldn't. No one present knew what those circumstances were, so that's when Alina Lise had to explain everything to them. Uh. It was a conversation that would Selfie. finally reveal Rudy's marriage to Roxy. Marriage. A significant shock that only more and she knew. could help she her. Knew. <laughs> Part of the reason she was so taken aback by it was because there was a whole lot of embarrassment that came when remembering how she acted in the labyrinth. Yep. As we all saw in the last episode, He's all, touchy, touchy. all those advances she made now made her feel foolish. Damn, it's like flirting with the girl and she's like, I got a boyfriend later and you're like, oh fuck. Oh, what have I done? She was mortified by the thought of having done all that and upset at the fact that no one told her sooner. Roxy chose not to say anything about it though, since what mattered most now was simply helping Rudy. Sure, the sure. ultimately decided to let Rudy sort out himself. Since Selena Lise couldn't do it and a brothel wouldn't be effective enough, what about Tall Hands? They all agreed Rudy would pick himself up on his own. He was, after all, an adult now, and more than that, he would. I love this frame here. This, listen to what Annie New says here. Rudy has to pick him up himself, listen. Self up on his own. Yeah? He was, after all, an adult now. He was, after all, an adult picking up self on his own. He has to get back up. And what's happening right now in this frame? The earth bending of the rock, you know, going high. You know, it's like a rock erect, but right? More than that. I feel like that's so funny. I feel like that's an ex like, that's, that's, that's a... Funny little scene that he put him, because like he's moving up, the dick is also rising, he's pooing himself up, you know what I mean? He was Paul's son. Yeah. So, as everyone agreed Rudy could figure it out, Roxy alone knew that he couldn't. It was a deeper understanding of Rudy that only came from the time she spent with him when she was younger. Yeah! The teaching when Rudy was a child, but then you're gonna say, well, actually, Rudy was mentally 30 plus something years old, so it's not grooming. Well, shit, well, y'all lollycons are getting your fucking, you know, the logic, you know, all mixed up. Because I thought that Rudy was mentally stunted, even though he was 40 plus year old mentally, you know, if you add up all the age thing, but he was mentally still a child. Therefore, Eris and Rudy was perfectly fine because, you know, these are the talking points that a lot of the like, cons kind of used to deflate, but you can't be using that in this situation. What's going on with Roxy then? Before I talk more deeply on that though, okay. it's important to understand why it is the others came to that conclusion so quickly. Long story short, Tallhand, Geese, and Alina Lise were all tired. Okay. It had been six long years since the displacement incident, and all three had been working non-stop since. 
whether it be traveling continent to continent or delving the labyrinth, their once broken party had reunited under a common goal again. Okay. They'd even reconciled their differences and fought side by side, which was the shining beacon in an otherwise unpleasant situation. Okay. It was a turn of events that none had ever even dreamed would happen. All that was left was to rescue Zenith and find Ghislaine, then their original party could enjoy drink. No, no, read your comment right now, right? Because Roxy's a lot older than Rudy, so it'll be okay. No! Apply the logic, because people also say, well, well, yes, Roxy is actually not a young girl because she's an old demon, but she has the mind of a child because they mature younger. Again, these talking points don't line up. They're all contradicting each other. Who can This is why it's bullshit to bring up the fucking mental age of, you know, how stunted people different characters are, right? It's a moving goalpost of like, oh, yeah, they were mentally mature when it fits my narrative, but it's not when it doesn't. It's just like, there is no consistency here. That's why I just laugh at this shit, and this is all bullshit. It's like how they used to. This was what everyone thought to be the natural outcome of this all. Okay. Now that Paul was dead, though. Whatever hopes each had in making that distant dream come true were now shattered and out of reach. It was a sudden tragedy that overwhelmed each of them with this indescribable feeling of exhaustion. Okay! It wasn't so much from the fact that Paul had died though, but rather from the feeling everything had been for naught. It was as if they'd spent years building something special, all for it to fall to pieces right before completing it. Kind of like spending all day on a report, then losing it because you didn't say that. Nah, nah, mind break. This was what the others were going through, and it made it clear Rudy wasn't the only one feeling the fatigue of it all. Okay, everyone's tired this as fuck. This brings us now to Roxy and Rudius, which on a surface level showed what it was that needed to be shown. What? What the anime left out that was extremely important, though, okay, was okay, okay, okay. that moment indicating Rudy's grief wasn't just about Paul. It was very much associated with his- I don't care about Rudy's grief! I want the justification on why Roxy offered a pussy! That's what I want to know right now! But, like, we're skipping over it! I don't care about Rudy's grief of- Oh, dead parents! Oh, wait, wait, wait! No, no one cares! No, but everyone wants to know the spicy shit! Why did Roxy do it? Does she have a good reason? So far, there's no explanation. So far, it's just like- Shit, I don't know. It's just like, yeah, they had to do it. I, I, I'm still not getting my answers. His original parents, too. Before he straight up says how this is, though, Rudy would first explain how he was repeating the same mistakes as last time. Just like how he'd been unable to give anything back to his parents before, once again he felt he'd done the same with Paul and Zenith. He'd ignored their problems and kept to himself, and only realized the true effects of it when it was far too late. That marked 50 years he'd lived in total, yet none of <laughs> Damn, he's 50 now, bro! Damn! Rudy is 50. Rudy is 50. Damn! Which were spent actually growing. To him, Rudy felt he hadn't changed at all. It's probably like 35 plus 15 or something? Or actually, no, Rudy's how old now? I actually don't even know. Is he 18? Anyways, it's 30-something it's plus 10-something. It was a revelation that spit right in the face of everything he set out to do in this life. So, feeling as if he'd wasted his years yet again, Rudy felt recovering this time was impossible. Okay. That is, um, at least until Roxy came and lightened his burden a bit. Yeah? Her heartbeat and smell were oddly soothing, and knowing she herself <laughs> lost a friend the same way Rudy lost Paul, well, that was reassuring since it showed it was possible to bounce back from these types of things. Okay, so R Rudy sees that Roxy also went through the same shit, but, you know, she's recovered so I can do it too. Give some comfort, but why the pussy? Roxy would then frame her advances as if they were for her, likely mm. to make Rudy think that doing what they were going to do would be okay. Okay. She made clear that it was helping her get over Paul too, and that at most this was a casual one-time thing to wash away all the bad. Oh my god, that's even worse. Oh my god, you, you gonna fucking make it look like it's okay, Rudy. Because, like, even though you feel dirty and we shouldn't be doing this, it's actually helping me. It's actually helping me get over my trauma, too, so we should do it right now. Yeah. One nice stand. Let's fucking go, Rudy. This didn't really make any sense to Rudy, but for some reason, he still found himself invested in it. Enough okay. that he wanted to explore more. Okay. The relief Roxy was offering was just too tempting to give up right now. Why do we need to have the relief to settle our trauma, though? Because it would help Roxy settle our trauma, and it's a... But that was, like, 
kind of like a coercion, like a coercion, kind of like a lie. I, I, I don't know. I just want to know why sex was the only option. I'm, I feel like I'm not being unreasonable. I just want some bullshit explanation for that, but they're skipping all that. It's the day after that brings us to what I think is the most important part of this whole season. All right, because all right. The topics covered here add a whole nother layer we've completely forgotten about. Let's go. The anime did it back when he was dealing with Norn, but removed it here now in this scene with Roxy. It's the final part showing Rudy come to terms with how he treated his old family. An essential part of him accepting who he was before and finally moving on so that he can focus on his new family. So. The day after, Rudy did still feel an overbearing heaviness, but it wasn't the same despair he'd felt before. Is it the despair of feeling that he cheated on the selfie? No, what is this? No. The anguish of yesterday felt like nothing but a dream now. Okay. He certainly felt lighter what with experiencing what he did, but to say it fixed everything wouldn't be accurate. <laughs> okay. It was more so just an effective means of temporary alleviation. What worked to help? Edina didn't say didn't stop it. She recommended Roxy to do it. Remember, Edina Rize told Roxy about the marriage, and Edina Rize also, I think it's pretty much confirmed that like, yeah, you should do it because I'm the grandma. But like, fuck it, you can go in. Help him more than that was actually Roxy's response to his question of what he should do now. It was an important question prefaced by an even more important story. Uh, you One we unfortunately now. didn't get to see in the anime. So. Before Rudy had asked what he did, he first spoke of his past life under the pretext it was a story he just made up. He referenced his trauma, the ensuing seclusion, and everything after, okay. focusing mostly on the parts with his parents. You see, he wanted to make clear the part where he wasted away his old life, so the pain of repeating that same mistake was apparent in this new one. He explained how his old parents died and he didn't see them off, then paralleled that to Paul's death and how it made him see the So Roxy different. knows all this now? What I mean okay. is that it was only after losing someone precious in this new life that Rudy was finally able to recall the death of his old parents and finally mourn them. A story Rudy gave to Roxy without including himself, but the message was clear and this was how Rudy was truly feeling. And then he Roxy was did? Coming to terms with how it was he left his family in his old life and seeing for the first time just how much it really weighed on him. As Rudy described it himself, it was like the pent up bile festering in his heart was all spilling out now. An emotional burden he was dying to finally let out to someone. So, all this was never just about Paul, but instead about his original parents too. It was an additional layer that makes the context of his question entirely different. Rather than what he should do as someone grieving Paul, it's now what should my he parents do as back on Earth who never reconciled with his old parents. This was what Rudy was truly asking here. It made Roxy's response slightly different, since at first she suggested visiting his parents' graves and seeing the uh, family that's that kind of him impossible. Out. When Rudy explained how that wasn't possible, well, if we get the teleportation shit settled with Nanahoshi, maybe it will be, but probably not. That's when she said how he should cherish the family in front of him now. Yeah, in front it was right an now. incredibly cliche response for sure, yet one strong enough to relieve Rudy of everything. Hearing her say these basic yet meaningful words reminded Rudy that both his parents and Paul's deaths were inevitable. It allowed him to understand that all he could do was face them head on and accept them. The bare minimum is someone still living. Yes, he did feel anxious about having to relay Paul's death to his sisters, but- Oh, fuck me. I swear to God, if Norm's gonna pull some bullshit today, bro, is she gonna just get all mad and- <laughs> Your fault, you're so strong, the way you do this, you're cheating on Sophie too, way- Ah, Norn, come on, don't do this to me in the finale. That was just one of many anxieties in a future full of unknowns. A future Rudy knew he couldn't run away from. If he was going to keep pushing forward like how Paul would have wanted him to, then the only thing he could do now was solve the problems in front of him. He didn't know what he should do or how exactly to proceed, but what he could do was approach each issue and work his best to solve them. This was what he'd decided to do when he was reborn here, and it's once again something he'd recommitted to doing now. He had reaffirmed with himself his principle of living life to the fullest. This meant he would no longer turn his eyes away, so no matter what the problem, he vowed to always overcome them. It was a renewed mindset that freed Rudy from the shackles previously restraining him. Okay, a good. A beacon of light shone in the darkness by Roxy. So I, I get it. I, I get the entire point of the important shield right now is 
relaying the fact that Rudy did not completely get over or was able to mourn or grief or overcome the tragedies with his old parents back on Earth, right? And now, because Paul died, it's actually just like reminded him again and using Roxy to help, you know, he's able to overcome it and move forward. And even though he doesn't know what to do with these impossible problems that he has with Zenith and the family and the other shit, he's going to move forward, right? I get that. Everything here makes sense. Why did Roxy do it, though? That's the one thing I just wanted to know watching this video. I don't give a fuck about Rudy's grief. I don't give a fuck about Rudy's, you know, trauma. I'm not here to fucking pity party. I just wanted to know, why did Roxy fuck Rudy? Why was that the only option of offering him relief? But it was skipped over, and I am disappointed. Because she was able to help him see what was really important, not only was Rudy able to deal with Paul's death in a way that was healthy, but he was also able to finally accept and overcome this suppressed emotional burden from his past life. It's some extra depth to Rudy's character that I personally thought to be very important. I agree. Now, the rest- But I think Roxy's reasoning is more important, but we're just gonna not talk about it. Because at the end of the day, it's just gonna be- Sex is healing. Intimacy is just bonding. And we don't need to explicitly mention why she did it because, you know, we're all mammals and we just, we just, we just need to do it. I, I, I don't know. I, I felt like there was an actual reasoning from Roxy's end and why she did it beyond what the anime told us of her just lusting over Rudy because he, he looked like the hero when he saved in the labyrinth and all the shit we did back at home and all the different bonding stuff. And feel like she, I don't know. I, I just wanted like some reasoning instead of just skipping over it, just something to kind of like let me be like all right I'll, I'll i'll take that but we're just gonna skip over it rest of the episode was the journey home but rather than talk about the crazy money they made or rudy's soft spot for armadillo instead i just want to talk briefly on roxy's perspective here okay wait last four minutes last four minutes wait it might be saved Almost a month had passed where she was acting as both Rudy's left hand and his lover, so Rudy yeah. was trying to figure out a way to make things right. He wanted to repay Roxy for saving him since the way she had was on par with the way that Sylphie did. She was a source of mental support unlike- Sylphie having sex with Rudy intimately is to fix his erectile dysfunction. Roxy fucking Rudy is to fix his trauma? But like- Erectile dysfunction being fixed by sex, it makes sense, right? The nature of this problem comes from him not being able to get up. So having this intimacy ha to have him sexually active actually makes sense. The depression part, I feel like sex is not the only way. I feel like being intimately bound like that is not the only way to cure this like problem that he has. Any that Rudy had ever had before. Even if you consider all the things she had done before all this, Roxy's role in his life has had an immeasurable impact on him. Yeah. Enough that Rudy knew he owed her more than anyone. So, Roxy would take this chance to explain her side of things and let's specifically hear it. how she knew Rudy wouldn't be able to recover on his own. Oh, let's hear this it. Why, why we need a coochie? Okay. Roxy's demon pussy was so strong. There is no way Rudy would have been able to recover. Let's see. Let's hear it. See, she remembered just how close Rudy was to Paul back then. Yeah. She also remembered just how terrified Rudy was when he went outside, and this reminded Roxy that despite all of Rudy's talent, deep down he was actually really weak. Okay. She recognized a part of Rudy that no one else ever could, and you- And took advantage of his moment of weakness. Okay, no way, let's keep going. ...used it to understand that Paul meant far more to him than anyone had even realized. Okay. Perhaps more than even Rudy himself. So, now that Paul was gone, Roxy was afraid Rudy would sink so far into depression that he wouldn't recover. She was afraid that leaving him for too long would only make things worse. This led her to actively try and find a solution, but since no one else could provide the one that she knew would work, Rock why, why would it work though? Why would it work? Why would just clapping cheeks once work though? She concluded that it had to be her. Why? She came to realize that she was the only one who could do this. You're still skipping over it. You're skipping over why it would work though. And I get it. If you're just gonna go with intimacy, bonding, trauma moments, sex, it's gonna heal. Like if that's the root of your pro like your answer, just tell me that. At least just say, you know what? Even though like there is no like grandiose plan or reasoning or justification, it's as simple as two, you know, just fucking animals just mating and having an intimate bonding and, you know, being able to like uh, fucking solve out their traumas mutually. 
The reason why she got so emotional after this was because in that brief moment where she shared such a deep intimacy with Rudy, she couldn't help but think that maybe she did have a chance. As illogical as it was to think that. This part is fine. Like, again, Roxy fucking Rudy and then thinking, like, maybe I do have a chance for the second one. That's perfectly fine. That, that's separate. That's beyond. What I want is before. The reasoning of why, but is you not know, gonna be mentioned. Roxy's feelings for Rudy were something she simply couldn't contain anymore. Okay. What made the whole thing especially heart-wrenching was the fact that everyone knew Roxy had feelings for Rudy, yet no one did anything to tell her her efforts were futile. No. Instead, everyone just let them build and build to the point that she couldn't suppress them anymore. Oh, couldn't suppress them anymore. Okay, well, I felt like um, nobody telling Roxy was a good move because that led to a lot of funny moments between them kind of flirting the labyrinth that I actually enjoyed. Only for them to end up shattered in a conversation which should have happened sooner. To Roxy, this was both cruel and unfair, and while she would never voice how she felt to any of the others, in truth, she was deeply hurt by how it happened. It was a devastating heartbreak that Rudy couldn't help but feel partially responsible for. I wonder how Sylphie's gonna feel today's episode. The rest was the journey to the ruins, then the forest after, which for the most part captured the main things just fine. There was one big bombshell I'm surprised they didn't include, but oh. that's something I'm sure they'll mention either next episode or next season. Finale content. Just in case they don't though. I'll give you five seconds to click off the video, then- I'll Ah, fuck, should I? No spoilers, but should I have you- Do you guys want to go about talk about? What should I do? I'm confused. Chat, let me know right now. Do I watch or no? You guys are being conflicting. People are saying skip, people are saying watch. I need a definitive answer. There is more watch. There is more watch than skip. Also, hold up. Let me just bring something from the Discord here. Uh, Maddox said, uh, check the Discord, there's a little snippet. I'm on uh, Discord right now. Where's the light novel section? You fucking baited me. There's nothing in the fucking Discord. You fucking wasted my time. Oh, here it is. All right, all right. Hey, hey. This is from Maddox. Let's 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 read it. It's a it's a section from the light novel, apparently. So uh, let's read this. Roxy further brow suspicious. Ms. Erinarize, do you have some kind of plan? A pause. No, I don't. The elf maintained their poker face. Well, how should I put it? Gee scratched at his cheek, while tall hand looked at Rudy's ass. Hmm, well, in times like these, it's best to just enjoy yourself to the fullest and try to forget the tall hand kind of hinting that, you know, enjoying here is basically making love. Enjoy yourself? Roxy echoed back confused. Men are straightforward. Give him some alcohol, a woman to bed, and they'll get that rush of joy from being alive. Bring a little bit of energy back to them. I mean, yeah, it's not going to return to them to how they were, but still. So, all that, that's all you had to do. That's all you had to just say that Tall Hand made him do it. Just blame it on Tall Hand. Just say, Tall Hand said, get that boy drunk, offer some pussy, and we'll get over it. That's all I wanted. That's all I fucking wanted, and any of these didn't mention it. It is what it is. Now, people are still saying, nah, don't watch it. People, there's more watches than don't watch, so I'm gonna watch this. I'll just go ahead and say what it was that was said. Okay, so in this conversation with Alina Lise, part- One last, one last, one last check. Again, one in chat for don't skip, two in chat for skip. What do I do? What do I do? Two for skip, one for no skip. There's a lot more people typing one in chat. I feel like I should just watch it. Fuck it, we're raw dogging it. Let's watch it. Part of the reason both her and Rudy had such a change of heart was the potential that Roxy was, well, pregnant. <gasps> Details had come out during a con- <gasps> 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 What? Wait, we clap what already? God damn, god damn. Do demons like give birth at a faster rate than elves? Like, w do we have to wait nine months? Like, how, do how does that work? But okay. Conversation between just Alina Lise and Roxy, and Alina Lise was now sharing those details with Rudy. This was what prompted Rudy to say he'd marry Roxy, and that's what led to their conversation after. Hold up, hold up. Conversation between just Alina Lise and Roxy.
Elena Lise and Roxy mentioned possibility of pregnancy. See, and Elena Lise was now sharing those details with Rudy. You know what I think? You know what I think? I think that the child grooming homewrecker manipulated Rudy by telling Irina Rize that she is pregnante and then Irina Rize making Rudy make that move. Mm, 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 mm. Oh, it's easy, easy, easy. All according to plan. That should do it. Roxy is a cold, ruthless businesswoman, man. This was what prompted Rudy to say he'd marry Roxy, and that's what led to their conversation after. Okay. But yeah, that's the crucial bits you missed from an extremely drama-filled episode. Damn! It's unfortunate the anime couldn't include all the extra layers adding to Rudy and Roxy's characters, but at least that meant I was able to make what I hope was a decent video for it. No, it was a great video. If there was video. any video I'd want to show- I, I, I just wish Annie News mentioned the tall hand stuff, and- I'm probably the only one upset about it because I'm just fixated on why Roxy had to, you know, use her pussy to solve the problems. I don't really care about, you know, Rudy having multiple wives. I don't give a fuck about anything immoral, like, whatever. I just wanted to know why did Roxy do it, so maybe I'm the only one questioning that. Joku Tensei fan to watch, it'd probably be this one since I feel a lot needed to be said about this episode. So, if you enjoyed what you saw, then I did. feel free to leave a like and let me know down. Y'all know what to do, please! Go to Annie's channel. Sub to his videos, like his video if you haven't. Now, I get it, right? The whole point of this video, the meat, the meat of this video was like Rudy not being able to overcome his parental death, mourning, all that, you know, unresolved shit until Paul died. And then Roxy kind of helped along, you know, using her trauma. And it's like, I got my shit going on. You got your shit going on. Tall hand told me to fucking fuck you. So we're going to do that. So everything makes sense to me now. I got all my answers answered, questions answered. And now we're left with the finale episode, which will probably be uploaded in like, I don't know, like a many, many hours. That's why you should be watching this shit on Twitch. I'll see you guys later.